Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back on Fallout 4, and we are going to be heading to the Memory Den. So let's go in here. And What is over here real quick? Hold on. That's a warehouse. That's more... Hmm. I don't think I've ever gone into that warehouse, but we're not going to do that right now. Head into the Memory Den. Do what we wanted to do last time. Now, what you can do in here, which is pretty funny, this dress, in my opinion, doesn't look as good on your characters as it does on the character it's on, but you can steal it. And you can look at the inventory, so I will show you guys, but it's pretty funny when you actually steal it. I don't know if I made a video on it or not. Let's head into the memory den. Mr. Valentine, I thought you had forgotten about the lonely. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. This dress, I thought it would, I thought it looked good, and I thought it would look good. Amari, she's downstairs. I thought it would look good on your character, but it really doesn't. But if you come and you pickpocket her, you can actually, okay, hold on. You have to actually get your pickpocket skill up. But if you get your pickpocket skill up enough, you can actually pickpocket her clothes off of her, which is the most ridiculous thing ever. But you can, and... <laughs> But it doesn't look as good as I thought it would. It, it doesn't look nearly as nice or clean as uh, I thought it would look on my characters. Oh, you're not Irma. Okay, I don't really think there's much. There is some stuff to steal in here, but I don't think there's anything real significant. Thought he was going to talk. Okay, um... But maybe I'll get my lockpick up and I'll show you what it looks like on your character. It doesn't look nearly as good as I thought it would, since I'm all about that fashion. Dr. Amari? Yes. I take it this isn't a social call. Hold on. Nice. Roboco Fun includes the Grognak the Barbarian holotape game. This is not stealing down here, so I suggest taking everything you can that you want. Don't ask me why down here it's not stealing, but upstairs it is. Were you going to say something or not? You're the one who can extract memories from a brain, right? Normally, we only allow our clients to experience their own memories. Now, what's this all about? We need a deep dig, Amari, but it's not going to be easy. The perp, Kellogg, is already cold on the floor. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse. You don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Please. Nick told me you're the only one who could make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait. That's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Mm, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Go on, Doctor. Mr. Valentine is an older generation synth. But Institute technology being what it is, a brain implant could fit him. But that's an incredible risk to take. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. I'm well past the warranty date anyway. Hey. I appreciate this, Nick. You can thank me when we've found your son. All right, let's do this. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine. Just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. 
That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. Tell me you have a way past this, Doctor. Let me think. The encryption is too strong for a single mind. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory lounger. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. All right, let's get started. Just sit down over there and keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. I like how they have your companion stand kind of perfectly in view. Brainwave migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. So I'm probably going to be quiet for most of this whole thing. There's not much for me to say. We'll move. I'll move. Um from section to section, uh, maybe get in a few words, but there's a lot of talking in this part, so I may not have a whole lot of speaking for the next little while. Can you hear me? Ah, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. That makes it official, folks. The final vote counts. Turn down the goddamn radio! I'm trying to sleep! All five states have now signed on, which means that as of this moment... Remember, you are experiencing these memories as Kellogg. This may prove disorienting at first. Mm, what a joke. What's it mean, Mom? Nothing, Connie. People like to talk and hope someone else is going to keep them sane. Teacher at school said the NCR would bring back the good old days, like before the big war. Don't you listen to that twaddle. I'm going to stop sending you if that's what they're teaching you. I'm going out. Where the fuck did you put my boot? Listen to me, Connie. You take this. You're old enough. You're the man of the family now. It's your job to protect us. Your father's useless, but you won't turn out like him. You're a good boy. And all that on the radio, all useless talk. The only thing that will protect you in this world is that gun in your hands. You need to learn to use it if you're going to survive. I... I will, Mom. I promise. I won't let you down. You have always been my good boy. This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. There appears to be another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Try that one. All right, on to the next memory. It's gonna be fine. You'll see. But we don't know anybody here. And now, with the baby? Come on, Sarah. You've gotta give it a chance. I finally got steady work with a good outfit. The thing about happiness is... You only know you had it... when it's gone. I mean, you, you may think to yourself that you're happy, but, uh... You don't really believe it focus on the petty bullshit or next job or whatever. It's only looking back by comparison with what comes after that you really understand that's what happiness felt like. 
Nothing like that in the NCR these days. No, I, I'm not saying this was a mistake. I, I'm just... Are you sure these guys know what they're doing? They seem kind of green. I know. But that's where I come in. Just wait. In a few years, I'll be running my own crew. As soon as I make the connections I need. Then I can give you anything you want. And little Mary, too. I never worried about you before. Must be my mama instincts kicking in. <laughs> Who knew I had those, huh? Come on, you're great with her. And you don't need to worry about me. Most of it's just running security for the she. A lot of standing around looking tough. Well, they sure picked the right person for that job. Listen, it's gonna be great here. See this? This is what's gonna keep you and Mary safe. I promise. I know, Connie. I'm sure we're gonna be really happy here. We are. You'll see. That's okay. I got her. Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. I like this this part right here. It's like a nice it's a story that kind of paints the picture of Kellogg, and it's really, it's really well done. How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there to help them. I found another memory to try. I'll connect you. Mind if we... There's always someone who wanted someone else dead. Sometimes just roughed up, but uh, dead was usually what they wanted. Sometimes they thought they could cheat me. That was usually only when I first arrived somewhere. Didn't matter to me. They just took it as part of the job. A little extra thrown in for free. I always got paid in the end. One way or another. Sit down. Suit yourself. So, um, I hear you'll take care of people's problems. Is that right? If you pay me. Oh, we'll pay you. And, uh, you'll do this all by yourself? That's right. We pay you when the job is done. Is that okay? That's the way you want to do it. So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek away. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. Ah, oh, it's this way, right? Yep. Getting close. Mr. Kellogg, I'm glad you decided to meet with me. So, I finally ended up in the Commonwealth. I kind of ran out of road. Plus, I'd come to terms with life. I wasn't going to be stupid enough to get mixed up with caring about other people again. It was just me against the world. And the world had it coming. You're with the Institute. I wanted to see for myself if you really existed. We do, as you can see. What do you want? It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive of our operations lately. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. If that's a problem for you, I can see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. 
I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. Systems offline. Hmm. Impressive. We may have something to talk about after all. Getting warmer. One of these has got to tell us something. We are running out of brain here. Ah. Ah, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. Manual override initiated. Cryogenic stasis suspended. Vault computers are still working. That's good. Checking through the logs. Hopefully it's all... Just... find it. Pod C6. Down the hall near the end. Even then... I knew it was a mistake leaving her alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft pre-war vault dweller, even if she somehow got thought out. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. If she could take me out, they won't be able to hide from her for long. This is the one. Here. Open it. <laughs> is it Almost. Okay? Everything's going to be fine. Okay? Come here. No. Come here, baby. Wait. No. I got him! Let the boy go. I'm only gonna tell you once. I'm not giving you son! God damn it. Get the kid out of here and let's go. At least we still have the backup. Cryogenic sequence reinitialized. What's the holdup? I'm almost finished, Kellogg. I just need to confirm. Come on, come on, come on. All right, we're good. I'm, uh, I'm sorry you had to go through that again. I found another intact memory. Whenever you're ready. Is that your son? This appears to be a very recent memory, so good news, I think. Wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. <laughs> I thought it was a terrible idea, actually. But it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid, like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had turned out differently. But there's no going back. I knew it was just temporary. It'd be back to normal business before too long. It's okay. One of these days, you're gonna get your head blown off just barging in here like that. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. Wow. So 
Some heads are gonna roll for this. Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. X688. Ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. Bye. Teleportation. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there as soon as you're ready. Slow movements, okay? I don't know what kind of side effects the procedure might have had. No one's ever done this before. How do you feel? I'm okay, Doctor. Thank you. That's good. But I want you to keep monitoring yourself. We have to be sure there's no long-term damage. Are you ready to talk about what happened in there? There's more than one person who knows about the Institute. Virgil, that scientist who escaped. I didn't know Institute scientists could defect. This changes everything. He could answer all sorts of questions. Where did the memory say he was? The glowing sea? That can't be right. No one would risk going there, not even to hide. That's why he's there. To make the Institute think twice about following him. That must be it. He's using the radiation and the glowing sea like a shield, or a cloak. A way to throw them off and be at an advantage. If Virgil found a way to survive there, you'll have to do the same. If you're going to follow him. I'll find a way to get through the rads. Don't worry. Good luck. And be safe. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Remove the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs. Hey, Valentine. Hope you got what you were looking for inside my head. <laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. Is that you? What? What are you talking about? Nothing. Never mind. If you say so. Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. Or I could head back to Diamond City, since you've got company already. I'll see you around, Nick. Good luck out there. You know where to find me. Alright guys, that is going to do it for this episode. That was the Memory Den. Uh, kind of just, uh, I might do a double upload today just so there's a little action for you guys Fallout-wise today. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.